Let's talk about love, love, love. Let's talk about injustice, 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 injustice. Let's talk about you, you and me, me and the journey. Let's talk about it. Hello and welcome to the community talk show called Let's Talk About It, where we focus on issues affecting our communities and much, much more. I'm your host, Sheree Von Moore, and today I have with me an award-winning writer-director of a film that is currently in selected movie theaters entitled River Runs Red, starring actors such as Tay Diggs, John Cusack, and George Lopez. Now, before we start talking to Wes, I want to let you guys know that there are two things that I definitely love about this film. One is that it's touching on some of the issues that we are facing right now, where a lot of our black males are being murdered by the hands of white police officers, as well as how an African-American can be in the position of power and still not have power. So welcome to the show, everyone. Wes Miller. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. So before we started talking about the film, I want you to tell my viewers a little bit about who you are, as well as um, I was listening to an interview that you did at a film festival where you told the lady that you actually transitioned from an attorney to a writer director. So tell us about that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, you know, I uh, started off practicing law. Um, and then, you know, about eight years in, maybe about five or six years in, I knew that wasn't, you know, the final call. I always loved the law, but I'm always going to do something to have a little bit broader impact. And, you know, uh, about 2000, yeah, about 2011, 12-ish, um, I just started, you know, picked up a camera, uh, love, you know, making images, really learn how to tell a story based cinematically and working on cinematic grammar and, um, yeah, and transition out uh, of the law and into film and, you know, um, really love it and enjoy it. And, uh, you know, I'm originally from Memphis, Tennessee and, um, you know, living in Florida now, but just working hard, grinding and, you know, just, uh, you know, just trying to, uh, you know, make a difference with the, with the art that we make. Right. Right, that's a big change, but you know you got to go where the heart is, correct? <laughs> Absolutely, and you know a lot of people, you know, including my mother, were you know, like, "What are you doing? Like, you went to you went from the law to you know trying to make movies, which you know is a natural reaction. Um, you know, when you go from a quote unquote stable, you know, profession to you know one where you're starting all over." And, uh, you know, I know her concern for me was, you know, just, you know, making sure that would be okay and, and everything. And thankfully she's come around and, you know, enjoys the films herself. So, um, yeah, but, you know, um, wow. yeah, when I made the transition, it was just like, you know, no looking back, no plan B. Right. This is, you know, where I'm supposed to be. You know, let's just work as hard as it takes to uh, get, you know, to achieve our goals. Right. Well, definitely congratulations on that. So with creating this film, what were some of your challenges? Oh, yes. With any independent film, there are a lot of challenges. Um, you know, from, you know, getting financing, from mm -hmm. financing, falling through, to, you know, uh, free shooting in, like, you know, super freezing weather, when you know, in the coldest uh, winter that uh, Louisville has had in years. Yeah. Um, you know, to, uh, you know, just getting your material out um, right. into the right hands. Yeah, it, it, it's always challenging. And, you know, this one, you know, it was really hard. You know, we were, you know, all set to shoot them. You know, we lost some financing. And then, you know, uh, the team of producers really just kind of worked extremely hard to, you know, pull the resources together. and uh, But it just kind of threw us off. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, as a director, you know, you you know, you have to, you know, be captain of the ship. Right. And, you know, when it's in rough waters and make sure that the product, you know, comes out as the great it can be. And, you know, just had a good support. And, um, yeah, it's just challenging. And indie, indie films are challenging, you know, right. just by the nature of them, um, which is, you know, pretty much any film. Um, you know, I heard Spike Lee once say in an interview that, you know, it's hard to make a even though it's even hard to make a bad movie, so really, yeah, movie. Any 
know, it's just hard. And they also say it's like little miracles every time, you know, you, you guys should get a green light to make a movie because there's so many moving pieces that if one of them falls out, it just makes, you know, the whole machine stop running, you know. And, um, yeah, but the, the lessons learned from that, actually, I think, you know, were things that I needed to learn as a filmmaker, uh, you know, you know, you hear the saying forged in fire. Um, and you know, I just think it just helps you be tougher on the business side and, you know, making sure you know, when you're stronger on that side, it helps free you up artistically, continue, you know, doing your uh you know, what you're aiming to do with the material. Right. Where was the film shot at? Uh, we shot in Louisville, Kentucky. Kentucky. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what are some things that you will want your audience thinking about in the car as they drive home after watching this film? You know, it's a good question. You know, uh, because art is so subjective, uh, I want them just thinking. I want them talking about it in some shape, form, or fashion. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I think, you know, it's generally, but I think overall, you know, me as an artist, I think what we were looking at with this piece is, um, and you kind of touched on it, you know, what what are the people in the system, you know, who the system's supposed to work for, you know, the system still won't work for them, like, you know, what, what are they supposed to do? Right. And, you know, I, I, I would love for people to have the question, like, you know, how at what point in this story would the tragic slide have have ended? You know, if the officers had, you know, acted differently, if the mayor had acted differently, right. if Charles had made a different choice, you know, and is there something that we as a society can do to prevent a tragic slide like this from happening? And, um, you, know, you know, we're working on the Western now, and this one to me was kind of like an urban western in the sense of our justice system is technically in place to prevent us from you know taking up arms and just going and calling somebody out to the courtyard and having it do to get their own individual justice um, but when that system fails like what are you supposed to do and as a father are you just really just supposed to sit there and other man walking the street who took their son's life or just walking around and, and out frustrating that has to be but it just seems like our system and our society has said well you know that's tough you just have to deal with it and not provide any support not provide ways to prevent it and it's just like a sensationalized story and then it goes away Mm -hmm. Um, but everything still keeps moving on the same and at some point the system has to stop so i would love for them you know, the audience to have the conversation, how do we, how can we prevent this? And, you know, uh, you know, what, what would a father do if, you know, this happens and, you know, could he have gotten more emotional support, you know, um, because pretty much, you know, his wife turned his purse back on him and, you know, so right. those, those kind of conversations that I would love the audience to have that, um, yeah. Right, right. Besides the actors that you have worked with, who are some of the actors that you would like to work with? Even before I started making movies, I uh, was always a movie fan. And, um, you know, there are a lot of the, you know, guys that I think are just amazing actors. You know, I think of like the Lawrence Fishburne, right. um, the Robert De Niro, mm-hmm. the, uh, you know, I, I, you know, and then even, you know, uh, the younger generation actors and actually on the next film I'm working on you know I'm, I'm working with Ron Perlman and Frank Grillo and a gentleman David Jesse who uh, you know all three amazing talent and um, you know I just really you know I, don't, you know, I really want to work with great talent that, that can help me stretch as a director and, and maybe you know I can help bring a new element you know out in certain performances and uh, you know just looking to you know grow as a filmmaker Wow, that's awesome. So I have um, one of my viewers, Cynthia Vaughn Stevens. She wanted me to ask you, where did the name of the film derive from? Um, so, yeah, you know, this, well, one of the limitations of the, you know, you know, because, you know, um, 
because of the indie film and the budget. And the script, at the end of the film, the way that it ended was um, you have the three gentlemen laying there and all of their blood begins to, like, you know, run down the street. And at some point, they all join together and it's like one stream of blood. Yeah. And it basically, like, runs, you know, like a stream. Yeah. And the thought is, is you know, the uh, our, our, our blood running like a stream is like a river that runs red. Wow. Um, and it's the life, it's our life flow. So, um, so basically the, the river of life, all yeah. of our blood, you know, no matter what color you are, you know, it all runs red. Right. Wow. Um, and so, you know, that imagery is what I would love to end the film with or in the script. But, you know, of course, the, you know, we couldn't afford the, technical stuff need to pull it off um so, yeah. you know, that, that, that kind of thing that is a great concept to come up with a great title for this film kudos for that okay she also wanted to know what prompt or motivated you to write the film river runs red well you know i one of my goals as a filmmaker is to make commercial material that has social relevance Mm -hmm. um, and as a father, you know, of a teenage son and, you know, a person who worked in the system, you know, I found myself, you know, seeing these fathers and these mothers lose their children right. and sitting there and, you know, um, you know, having the, you know, talk with my son and letting them know, you know, uh, how to and what to and what not to do um, when he's being poured over. Um, it just made me thought, like, if somebody took his life, like, what, what would I do? Um, and so it just became like, you know, uh, just, just, I wanted to explore that character, um, that character motivation and everything. And so that, that was really motivation. You know, we just see these, you know, these, these parents losing their children right. and we see a system that, you know, kind of ignores it or brushes it aside for the quote unquote good of the system. Um, and, you know, I just thought it would be an interesting uh, exploration, you know, to see what, what, you know, what happens. And it's a tragic story, you know, it's definitely not a piece designed to encourage any kind of vigilante justice, but it is a piece that says um, there is a limit that people can reach. And when they reach that limit, that boiling point, we don't know what's going to happen. So... Why should the system just work so it prevents people from ever feeling like they have no support, no help, and right. they have to take things into their own hands? Wow. That is a very good question to put into people's minds, something to get people thinking. Wow. Awesome. So tell me, is there anything that we can look forward to from you that you're currently working on? So the one I mentioned to you uh, with Frank Grillo, David Jesse, and Rob Perlman is a Western that we're doing um, called Hell on the Border, and it's following the first uh, African-American deputy marshal west of the Mississippi named Bash Rudy. Um, he's a, a real-life hero that's been overlooked in the history books. Um, you know, it's a story that we re really want to tell and really want to touch, you know, open up, you know, our younger uh, kids to understand, you know, know of this story, but, you know, even uh, there's a lot of Western fans know of Bash Reed, and a lot of people have kind of been waiting for this story, and I believe we've landed on, like, you know, the perfect actor um, with David, and, and being able to bring the story to life. Wow, okay. Well, congratulations so on that as well. That, like, in a month, and uh, okay. it should be released by this time next year. Okay, awesome. Congratulations on, on that as well. Look forward to seeing that film. So if someone wanted to get in contact with you um, or watch the film, let my viewers know your contact information and where they can view the film. Um, yeah, I can always at um, I am Beth Miller at Gmail. And you can find me on Twitter and Facebook. Um, I think it's I am West Miller is the handle and Instagram as well. I am West Miller. Um, and you can catch the film on like iTunes, Amazon, any major streaming service, and it'll come out on Home Entertainment on December 11th. 
Awesome. Well, thank you again for talking with me and um, congratulations on the film. Um, and I look forward to seeing um, and watching some of your new projects. All right, well, thank you for your time. Thank you for watching it. You know, I'm watching it with an open heart and open mind. And, yes. uh, and I'm really glad you enjoyed it. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. And always remember to let's talk about it. Have a good night.